Welcome to Reality TV. Amina Butterfly and Peter Guns has had what some say the most tumultuous relationship of the Love & Hip Hop franchise to date. Amina was live on an interview with Victoria Jen where she talked about her experience on Love & Hip Hop New York, how she ended up on the show, and how she met Peter. Check this out. It was really like completely by chance. It was through, um, at the time, my husband, who I was married to, um, Peter Guns. Um, so he um, he knew some of the people. Uh, he actually knew somebody on the show, Rich Dollars. He knew a bunch of people on the show. And um, so one day, you know, at the time, we were freshly, like, dating and all in love and everything. And, um, he just said like yo let's hang out and my, my my boy is filming like they're filming a scene for love and hip-hop let's go by and he ended up actually being like um uh, doing like a cameo that day but i just sat there and watched and just hung out like, right hung out. um and then so i guess he got into a conversation with one of the producers and once they found out about his life that was a wrap he, they wanted to know all about it all about me all about his you know his situation so i was literally like just by his side and that's how it came about you were like a bystander and then the opportunity just presented itself. yeah yep then you know when, once they found out more and more that i'm actually also a singer because you know i've been signed i was in an r&b group it all it all went together right. it all like you know i'm married to a rapper it's like wow <laughs> we need them on the show <laughs> and yes, they got some okay. drama how did you and Peter Guns meet? Like, how did that even happen? Me and Peter met at one at my. Uh, it's like it, it, it's so beautiful to me to think back to that time of my life because I was working in New York at a club called the Village Underground, and those years were some of my favorite years. Um, right, you know, before I had my kids, um, just like living it up. I found a job that I loved because I was singing. I was doing what I love. I was amongst and around amazing musicians and singers every night and I learned so much it was almost like school for me I got comfortable on stage it's like those years I will always cherish so me working at that club that's where I met Peter because he was just a regular there he would come there every night or every other night to hang out and enjoy some live music and I was in the band and for about at least a year or two we wouldn't we didn't even ever talk it was just always like oh we know this person because he's always here oh this is peter right. he always had his shades on he was always like just in there hanging out and you know with different females and all that stuff and everybody knew him as the womanizer and the, the guy that yeah it's like you know <laughs> peter being peter yeah but that's how we met <laughs> and and then um even to go deeper into it, I don't want to make it too long, but um, I was dating somebody else Mommy. also working with me in the band. I'm, I'm going to interview, baby. I said, where is my lunchbox? It's in the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter. <laughs> like, mom, I'm uh, but, yeah. this now. In the sink. <laughs> in, the, by the, in the back, all the way in the back. Um, so, yeah, so I was dating somebody else at the time, and that somebody um, also knew Peter, and, you know, we were all, like, friends all like hanging out friends like me my boyfriend at the time and then we would hang out with peter and whoever he would bring at the time like, right <laughs> yeah so that's how we all um met and then when i when i got left because my boyfriend broke up with me peter was the one that knew the both of us and that had a relationship with the both of us because we hung out as a group for so many times um he was the one that i called and that's how it all <laughs> got it got it yeah. okay okay so let's talk a little bit about like the business of reality tv like how do you get paid how do you negotiate your contracts with that stuff like how does all that go down man i'm the wrong person to ask i still to this day i don't know i put it into the hands of like a lawyer <laughs> a good lawyer <laughs> and for them to negotiate and at the time i i, I you know it was good that i had my husband on there because he could tell me like you know what I should ask for or, you know, things like that. But right. um, in the beginning, it really, like, we didn't get paid much. And I was just happy to have an opportunity to be on TV and to be um, having that exposure. And all that I could think about was finally somebody's going to, like, hear, get out of my room. Get out of my room. Finally, somebody's going to hear my music. That's right, right. That's all I could think about. I, 
had put out my first solo EP in 2011. It was my first project as a solo artist and that was independent. And nobody was checking for it. Nobody knew who the hell I was, even though I wasn't in, in the R&B group. But like, I didn't have like a fan base that followed me from, from the time with Black Butterfly. So I put out a project and it was like, okay, now what? Nobody, nobody knows about it. I'm, I'm singing at this club, but what else is out there? Like I was just open right. for opportunity. And I'm like, I'm gonna be on TV and everybody's gonna love me. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to be the opposite. Everybody hated me. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I, I don't know about that, but let's talk about that a little bit because I think that experience part of your growth and part of the evolution of Amina. Mm-hmm. So what what were your major takeaways from that experience? Um, I'm actually very, very, very thankful for that experience because it made me so much of a stronger woman. It made me so, it, it just, not just the experience of being on TV, but the whole reality of it, that I was in that love triangle that I was, that I got hurt so bad and everybody could witness me just, you know, this week woman like weak for a man i like to say weak for a man because i was weak for a man but i wasn't weak as Mm -hmm. like a weak person um never been that but um yeah i was weak for somebody and just to be open in the public with that um made me just grow such thick skin and it just made me so brave and i just took away so many positive things from it that i can't be mad at it and i'm actually happy that I suffered so much because without that, I wouldn't be, you know, as strong as I am today. Mm, yes. In order to appreciate the sweet, you have to experience the sour. Mm-hmm. And never forget that. For so sure. out of your experience um, on the show, you became an author, right? And you wrote a book, The Other Woman. So talk to us about that um, and, you know, how that was therapeutic for you and what readers can get from that book yeah it's also something that wasn't planned I didn't sit down like okay I want to write a book I'm not it was more like it started just I was just journaling I was just writing down because ever since I was like a little girl like a teenager I want to say because as a teenager I struggled with depression and all kinds of things um you know anorexia but a a lot of different things that I struggled with as a teenager to the point where like I didn't want to live and like what, what saved me back then was writing, writing into my little journal. So then when I was at this low, being an adult now um, and going through heartbreak, break, I just knew that writing is something that's going to make me feel better. And so I would just write and write and write and write. And then at some point I connected with a publisher by chance and she encouraged me to just share and make it a book. And then she helped me set it up into chapters and all those things that I didn't know because I didn't know how to write a book. I just knew how to write. <laughs> right. Uh, shout out to 13th and Joan who published my first book, The Other Woman. Um, so then I just, it became like, okay, we have a goal here. This is going to be a book. Um, so I have to really structure it. I have to write more because it wasn't enough what I had written. Guys, can you please Mommy, get up? Can you please get up for that? They're, 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 not- they're shopping at my bed. <laughs> 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 and out my room, please. <laughs> life. Um, but yeah, um, so then it became like, okay, now we have to work towards finishing a book. And um, then it, be- it this book actually was easy to write just because it is written from the heart and it's all my truth. And there was nothing like I had to like do my research or like, you know, other things that happened with my second right. book that were harder. With this book, it was literally just... I spoke my truth and it was so easy. It was just kind of telling the story out of my perspective. And I was so happy when it was done and I'm still happy that it's out there for people to read because I felt like I was misunderstood so much on reality TV. So having that book, it's like, this is, this is really what really happened. This is really why it happened. This is why you saw what you saw. And this is why I did what I did or didn't do what I didn't do or couldn't. Yeah. Um, You know, all my weaknesses. And once you lay it all out there, like you just feel, I just feel so good that this book is out there, even though not enough people will have it, in my opinion. But that's yes, why we're talking yes. about it. Go have the book, y'all. The other woman. Yes. Um, tell your dad the book. right now. You mentioned that yes. people. I'm, I'm going to have to talk to these kids. Yeah. <laughs> gonna, I'm going to kick them out right now. 
I'm kicking him out. <laughs> oh my God, these kids are not listening. <laughs> but I kicked them out. They got they, they just I just got them ice cream. I got them all set up. I told them I'm going in a few minutes. Okay. All right. So um, you said that there were a lot of misconceptions about you while you there was what a lot of misconceptions about you on the show. Yeah, that you felt really didn't speak true to who you were. So. What were some of those misconceptions? Um, one, the, the number one thing I would hear after I started to be on TV is that I'm stupid, that I'm dumb. And that, that <laughs> like, I mean, I was weak for somebody and I was in love. Those are the things that are true. Um, but that I'm stupid, that I'm, at, at, at first it would hurt me. After a while, it was like, they don't know. They don't know me. That's when I wrote the song called The Real Me. Um, but that I'm just dumb for taking 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 shit from a man but you know they like who hasn't like what right like so it's like all of us do that like it was just the way it was shown they only showed my weakness my weak moments the moments where i would find out something crazy the moments where i would cry and be emotional because i i wasn't acting i was just really being myself and the thing that people saw on tv was real because it was really me but there was just so much more to me, the person, Amina, that I felt like you couldn't see. If you just watch the show, you always see me just weak and vulnerable. You don't see the the powerful woman that I feel like I've always been. And right. the one that knows her worth. And like the, the one that kind of you see more now, if you follow me on ID and on my daily life. And so, yeah, I felt like there was so much left out. And also like the fact that I... I really am not somebody that is good with words. That was as, at a disadvantage for me because when it came down to it, we would shoot scenes and like I would be thrown into the just into the scene. And I'm not good on the spot. I'm a thinker. I'm a writer. Like that's why, like on the spot, I'm not good with comebacks, clapbacks, all that stuff. That's not not me. And that's why sometimes I looked. It looked like I I'm, I'm a little, you know. Sometimes I didn't know what to say. I would stutter. My language barrier. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wouldn't find a word that I needed. Um, and then I, I just remember every time after filming every day, I would be like, I should have said this. I should have done this. I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have. And it was too late because the scene was filmed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just being me, you know. And again, what people saw was real, but there's just so much to me that I felt like, wow, they're judging me based on somebody they think I am, not who I really am, so. Mm. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below. Until next time.